Hi everyone, my name is Katrine Mikkel and I work for the Center for um, Teaching, Research and Learning. Before we start, I wanted to mention a few things. Captioning is available for this session. To turn on captions, there should be an option at the bottom of the screen uh, of the Zoom toolbar that says show subtitles. If you do not see it, uh, you may need to click on more to find that option. Also, there will be an anonymous survey at the end of the uh, QR code that you can scan with your phone and as a link in the chat. With that being said, I'm going to just turn it over to our presenters. Thank you. Thank you, Katrine. And I'm going to st start sharing my screen. Um... There we go. So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our session today where we will showcase dynamic and cost-effective initiatives that have successfully brought together domestic and international students here at AU, fostering meaningful dialogues about critical global issues while cultivating global perspectives. Today, um, I will be showcasing uh, my curricular activity. I'm Christina Domian, and today I'm joined by uh, Dr. Susan George, who will also talk about her co-curricular activities, and Gorky Cruz, the director of CLEAR, who will also talk about his initiative, Pursuing Coil. Allow me to describe my co-curricular activity first and how it came to be. Um, someone must have shared the link to an AAC and U conference on learning assessment during the pandemic. And I was impressed by the mission of the organization and it was free back then. So I attended. Um, from then on, I closely followed their work and soon I learned about global learning and the so-called value rubric. I'm going to share the presentation slides with you at the end of the session so you can freely explore those links embedded here. As I thought about it more and how I can bring global learning to my classes, it was clear to me that I should just focus on something that I can actually achieve in a reasonably easy way with my students. So I focused on one item from the value rubric called perspective taking. Over multiple semesters, I have been using this approach of co-curricular activities with my complex problem students and students, international students enrolled in the English Language Training Academy programs. Um, so as you can see, I started out with the iGen Reboot Complex Problems, and then I um, included students from the graduate writing um, course. And actually this semester I added on another very small cohort, only five students from my academic discussions class. These are pre-sessional pre students. Now, my core students, my complex problem students um, in the course focused on the course theme is iGen Reboot or intergen, uh, Internet Generation Reboot. So we're focusing on Gen Z and digital citizenship skills. And so they explore the topic in depth. Now, in the other two courses, those two courses are sort of skills based courses as well. But I bring in the content digital citizenship and we explore some competencies, sort of easier uh, materials with those students. Um, so it was in 2020 when I had this thought after you know, having attended the AACNU conference, okay, how do I do this? Why shouldn't I bring two cohorts together and see what happens as they exchange perspectives on digital citizenship competencies? They all have read, viewed, analyzed, and synthesized texts, information from various experts in the field about the topic over the semester. So they team up around week 10, 10 or 11, and together they explore the question, what are the key challenges of online participation, digital citizenship competencies? And, um, and so that's, that's how we proceeded. Um, I connected these students and encouraged them to explore the global challenges revolving around uh, digital citizenship skills. The two big goals um, 
for, for us was basically to equip freshman students with the necessary skills and perspectives to address the complex uh, global um, challenges of our time. How do we participate in the digital world that presents both challenges and opportunities? For international students in 2020, it was just so sort of, you know, boost their skills and bring them out of their sheltered classrooms. In 2023, by now, it's it's actually more um, layered with the graduate writing students. They take um, this um, co-curricular activity as sort of a poster session where they not only discuss the issue, but also narrow down the topic of their choice for their final research essay. And so they, they really want to um, dissect the topic and just uh, decide what which one to actually pursue for their research essay. And my academic discussion students to, again, move out of their sheltered classrooms and, and talk to native speakers. Um, so through these co-curricular activities, there were stimulating discussions, and I hope that we transcended cultural boundaries, allowing students to exchange ideas, challenge assumptions, and gain a deeper understanding of, um, of these topics. Uh, these activities were unique and or are unique, and they serve as an effective way to create an inclusive and engaging learning environment. Um, the core students, the complex problem students had, um, they, they were offering the opportunity for international students to actually take, um, put down ideas and you know, take sticky notes, put down their ideas and put them on the posters that they uh, had prepared previously. Um, the students were really resourceful. Those whose chat stations were by the um, whiteboard, they actually used it as their large um, poster, and they actually asked the international students to take down notes as they um, as they exchanged ideas or as they brought up ideas. It was uh, a fun event back then. It is still a fun event now. Um, luckily, there's a budget for complex problems, so um, we can offer refreshments as uh, as the students come in. So there's that incentive. <laughs> Um, the domestic students are always surprised and eager to learn about social media platforms from around the world and the different uses of, let's say, emojis, what's banned, what's allowed, what sanctions might be if somebody says too much online. Um, and so it's, it's very interesting. Um, sadly, they are all in agreement that regardless of one's cultural background, people are way too addicted to their electronics and they have little concrete knowledge about responsible digital participation and what it means to be alert, informed, engaged, balanced, and inclusive online. Um, however, at least during this brief exchange of perspectives, students from each cohort you know, challenge themselves and try to offer uh, viable solutions to some of these um, problems. So in 2023, when I brought together three groups of students in a more stu uh, structured way, I wanted to make sure that we stayed organized since there were quite a few students <laughs> involved. Um, and the students were given very specific instructions that guided their preparations. And if you're interested, um, once you receive a copy of the slides. If you click on this hyperlink, you can see how I um, built up the guidelines, starting with the learning objective, uh, objectives and uh, the topics of discussion. Uh, the guided brainstorming was also listed for them, what to include on the posters. And by the way, the international students also prepared posters um, just as much as the domestic students, the complex problem students. Um, they had homework activities laid out for them, so they knew exactly how to prepare for, um, for this exchange. And um, I gave them ideas of what to do and how to go about it, how the assessment or what the assessment would look like. Uh, clear groups, who was working with whom, so groups of students, um, worked on uh, selected topics. They had the source library as well, so they knew exactly what to synthesize on their posters. 
And as they built up the posters, we used um, the Lotus Blossom technique to present. So we wanted to present um, ideas and exchange ideas in an organized uh, way. And so this is what um, students had to um, had to follow. So each student knew exactly what they were supposed to work on and how to um, or what to focus on within uh, within the topics. And so that's that's something that I'm happy to share if you're um, if you're interested. Um, you can see two pictures here because, like I said, there were quite a few students, I think almost 30 of them. So uh, I was lucky enough teaching in, in uh, MGC and the classroom next to me was always empty. So my program leader was um, very attentive and it's like, I'll, I'll take one group. So let's split them up into two. And so as the students walked around and chat stations, there were five or six in each room. We could, you know, stretch out. So it wasn't really a very crowded one room. So we um, we had the overflow in the second room. We had one student joining via Zoom. She had some health issues. She couldn't attend in person. So we didn't want her to miss. And there was always someone holding the laptop. So it was like a hot potato case, but it was fun. We didn't want her to miss that on, on this either. Um, if you want to see uh, pictures from the 2023 event, there's a link to it here, and I'm, I'm happy to share that with you as well. Um, of course, I asked students on each end to reflect on the experience. I have to say everybody loved it. They really appreciated being exposed and um, being able to interact with others in this structured environment. Um, just the amount of information that they could uh, exchange within, you know, 75 minutes, um, maybe a little bit uh, longer than that was amazing. Something that they complained about was the shortness of the time. They said, you know, next time we would like it to be at least two hours. We think that would be so much better and not just once, but let's meet, you know, multiple times. So this is something that they um, they enjoy doing. And it's almost like they didn't even want to leave once the, the session ended. And so it was it was really good to see how um, uh, they sort of grew just, you know, within that short amount of time. Um, and again, once you get the the link to the presentation, these are some student testimonials videos in which they reflect on the experience itself. So if you want to know exactly what changes they recommended and how they felt about it, and again, it was all good. Um, I'm happy to to share this with you. Um, one last thing. So for the next time when I do this over again, um, I would like to increase the time and repeat it at least, you know, twice throughout the semester. And, and I think that for the session, the second session, I will probably pick some activities from um, the Project Zero's global thinking activities just to help um, the students, again, have conversations in a structured way. And now, Susan. Hi, everybody. Let me um, share my screen with you. Share screen. Um, okay. Um, so I had been talking to Christina about what she had done in her class. And I adopted this co-curricular activity when I saw the success that she was having. And in fact, we both attended the AACU um, conference this last year in 2023 together. And we are both uh, very engaged by the notion that um, these conversations can take place within the classroom and outside the classroom. So I felt that what she was doing would be particularly suited to my courses and topics. Like her, I've been teaching the complex problems course, and I also teach international students. So the topic for my um, 
so the, these are the two topics. The one on the left is the uh, my domestic students, and the one on the right is the graduate academic communication class. And these were the two core classes that I brought together. And um, the integrated co-curricular worked really well with this cohort because of the topic for my um, complex problems course. Uh, so, um, so I had two sessions um, and I found this particularly useful because I had the session one was directed by my domestic students and session two was directed by my international students. And so each of them had a kind of teaching and presentation component. Okay, so why, by using um, this format with both the set, sets of students, I found that um, this collaborative forum and I found that it facilitated mutual learning and both groups, um, were able to engage in uh, showcasing what they what their strengths were. So first, let's look at the se session number one. Um, so the way I um, the way I structured, or to back up, our ra rationale overall was giving the students an opportunity for cross cultural exchange. So. Um, through all the stages of this uh, activity, whether it was the preparation, the presentation, the discussion, the reflection, um, students were asked to consider whether they were meeting these goals of cross-cultural exchange, active learning, perspective taking, and um, it w worked out really well. So. Um, the first se session, English in the United States and Canada, my domestic students, my World English students, uh, facilitated that discussion. The session tracked with materials that we were um, handling in class and that they were becoming quite familiar with. Each group of students was divided into language regions and in this um, session, the students shared a variety of information, including accents, idioms, um, uh, idiosyncrasies of the English language and so on. Um, they also shared like some fun aspects of the language, um, things that they found quirky or interesting. This was particularly engaging and um, for the international students for whom often English is something they learn in school. And so to get a different perspective and learn some of the fun aspects of the language was very interesting. So, uh, the domestic students collected like videos, music, um, tweets and ads even to showcase these different language regions. Um, they collect, they created leaflets that served as kind of a primer for their presentation. So they handed these out and um, the international students looked at them, asked questions. At the end of the presentations, um, students, um, they did like quizzes, Kahoot for instance, and quiz. And um, so that it engaged the students as they were going on. As I walked around, I was taken by how lively the sessions were with students willing to share, ask questions and international students fascinated by all the differences that they were hearing about and quizzing the domestic students for additional detail. I think I... Um, um, so I think it went especially well. And as Christina said, she was able to do her just one session, but I think my students were really excited that they would get to meet the same cohort again, and they would be able to then share with them the things that um, they were doing. So the second se session that I had was English Around the World and a view of acquiring English. And this was led by our international students. And this occurred later in the semester for my complex problems, World English course, 
where they were studying English language in um, the growth and development of English in Asia. And so this really fit. This was really, uh, you know, a way where they were able to not just read about it, but hear from other students about this, um, about how they learned English. So the, sec the session explored the global dynamics of English as lingua franca and how it is acquired and used in different countries. So some of the, in so the international students focused on various questions such as um, how English was taught at different levels in their, in their countries. Predominantly my students are from China, but I've had students from, um, the UAE, I've had students from other countries as well. So the students organized short presentations with an emphasis on visual material. And it was so lively. I was, you know, the um, domestic students were so engaged by the presentations. So um, I had uh, I had homework and journal responses for both co-curricular activities. And here are some of the comments from students. Um, and I kind of separated the uh, comments uh, according to um, the reflection goals that they had. So, um, so whether it was that they learned a lot or they learned to view um, English differently or the role of English, um, or whether they were thinking about education, culture, academic rigor, how it varies between cultures. So um, their comments, their journal responses really showed a real involvement with the project, with the class and so on. So here is another one, English in Asia and how a recognition of how competitive um, education is in some in other countries, for instance. So um, again, this will all be in the um, you know in the document that you will have access to if you wish to review some of their comments, which are really wonderful. I you know I was very impressed by their depth of thought and uh, engagement with the activity. So um, before then, we have to switch to Gorky. He has a separate uh, file. So um, overall, I think that this co-curricular activity was very engaging. As Christina mentioned, we have funds from the um, complex problems for snacks and drinks and so on. So it was a fun activity. Students were milling around. They had the, you know, they had the ability to um, kind of relax and enjoy just sharing. And I thought that this was very uh, well received and it is something that I will continue to do. And now I will turn it over to Gorky. Thank you, Susan. Um, let me go ahead and share my brief PowerPoint with you guys. It here. I apologize, every all best laid plans. Um, just wanted to confirm that everybody can see my PowerPoint. Okay. So um, the story that I want to tell you today is very similar to Susan's and Christina's, but what we um went for here, and this is in the context of uh, Spanish for Heritage Speakers course here at American University. Um, and this was all um, it all came out of an invitation from the Global Learning Office from Luis Alvarado, who coordinates um, these programs there, for us to pilot something within the languages, right? Uh, they they were kind of looking for courses that will pair with this modality, uh, COIL, uh, collaborative, online, international learning um, readily. And so they thought foreign languages, yeah, that will do it, right? Um, I got to say that we were a little bit, uh, not everybody jumped on it right away because, you know, uh, people have tried this before. It's generally very complicated. There's all sorts of issues uh, in terms of like just finding the right uh, levels to match, um, uh, the, the timing that doesn't match necessarily across 
continents or across even countries. Um, and so we will see that there were some challenges there. What was um, a little bit more attractive about this particular invitation was they were saying, okay, let's do something that's brief. We don't want to do a whole semester sort of exchange. We're looking for a smaller um, sort of project. So within those constraints, we say, hey, you know, let's uh, let's give it a shoot, um, a shot, and see how it comes out, right? So we were paired um, with uh, a university in Chile, Diego Portales, and um, this all started. The planning all started basically back in 2022, um, after they kind of like looked at the potential partners and all that. We kind of settled on um, this particular team here at the University of um, Diego Portales, and they had a marketing course, um, which we thought would work well with our, the Heritage Spanish writing course that we were uh, willing to sort of pilot with. And so you can see here, um, a lot of like the background work had to do with just kind of getting everybody on the same page and just kind of like learning to work together. So you can see, uh, this is from one of our meetings that you see Luis, uh, the lady, the, the blonde lady is the, um, global learning rep over in Chile. This is another Gorky, one. Uh, let me interrupt you for a second. I think we're looking at a different screen that you are looking at because we we see the very last slide that says outcomes. Oh gosh, all right, Let's see, try that again. Thank you, uh, Christina. See, I'm not sure why that's going on. I am going to try the old fashioned way and then just go directly into this. All right, so I'm hoping that you can see the, the planning slide at this point. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Anouk and uh, Paola. These are all the people in Chile. And then over here, we have the instructors, right? So we have Lilian on the left, and then this is a Chilean instructor, Daniel, and myself. So here we started planning over the last summer. And um, we basically set the length of exchange to four weeks, and we decided that there would be two synchronic meetings. And the topic that we centered on had to do with identity, uh, identity in language, and also for the marketing course, they were working into identity as a way of selling a brand, because this was a, um, a brand lab within a marketing course. And so a lot of the work that had to go into this had to do with you know, rubrics had to be established for each one of the courses since the outcomes for each one of the courses were slightly different. Um, and so the project that our students had to come out with was a writing project. The marketing students had to come up with an ad, right? So there were like many different things that we had to kind of um, sort of bridge over. And so a little bit about the participants. These are the folks in Chile. Here's the instructor. We had a class with 24 students. Uh, as I mentioned before, Anouk, and uh, Paola were there for instructional support. And we also had uh, Benjamin, who was the technical support lead on that, on that end. As you can see here, it's like the class, and that's the, the AU people in the background here. And over here in the US, we have Lillian, and this is like her class. Um, um, and here we had, of course, Lillian, Luis as a global learning lead, and myself as instructional and technical support. Um, one of the things that we kind of did was a little bit old fashioned. Uh, even before they met uh, online for the very first time, we decided it would be a good idea for them to write each other letters. So we had a letter exchange. And the reason we did that is also because we had the opportunity, right? So we had Paola who works with um, AU abroad. Uh, she's, she's in the university in Chile, but she visits AU abroad quite frequently. And so she, she was due to come for the semester to AU. So she came from Chile bringing all these letters and gifts. And then she kind of went back with our letters to the students and the instructor over there. So that was a nice way of sort of kicking things off a little bit more uh, informally ahead of the actual uh, phases of the program. Once uh, that was done, we had the letter exchange. We actually started with the icebreaker and introduction, which was the first synchronic meeting of the four that were programmed. And then we had two weeks 
for the students to prepare projects uh, per the, the rubrics that we distribute to them. And the timing was managed by, themse by the, the students themselves. So in that first introductory meeting, we, um, we kind of had set everybody set up in groups so they could talk to each other. And we left it up to them to decide how they will keep in touch and when they will keep in touch, because that was a little bit, you know, with so many different people, we were dealing with, uh, what is it, 38 folk. So, you know, uh, that there was all sorts of complications. So we figured that it was better for us to sort of um, pass that on to them and it worked fine. Um, then the other thing that we had to contend with that is that we had Thanksgiving in the middle of all of this. So in order for it to work out, we kind of gave them trans Thanksgiving week as an optional additional week. So we told look, the students over in the US that it was it would be a good a, a good opportunity for them to kind of show the Chileans what Thanksgiving was all about, right? Because everybody, most everybody was going back home and they're having like the Thanksgiving dinners and all that. And I think uh, a good number of them um, did take that uh, opportunity to, to invite right, their uh, Chilean counterparts to come and, and see the Thanksgiving celebration, right? And then uh, we had a final synchronic meeting, um, which was closing. And then we took the opportunity to present some of the projects during that meeting. So here, because everything was drafted in Spanish, um, is the faces as I just um, describe them. So here's a synchronic meeting. Then these are the self-managed meetings. And there's two. This is the optional Thanksgiving meeting. And, and the final synchronic meeting again, when we all came together as classes. Um, uh, just like a little breakdown. So there was a lot of um, communication, lots of instructions and rubrics and things that went to the students. Um, these had to be managed individually by each one of the instructors, right? Um, so that folks will know exactly where they were and what to do. And that's sort of... Um, simplified things for students, but it was a little bit of a challenge for instructors because obviously they had to modify a little bit of the scope and sequence of their course, right? So that's what we found ourselves. We have a certain number of credit hours and we want to cover certain things within those credit hours. And so we wanted the COIL thing to not only be an addition to, to the course, but we wanted to sort of like really work it into the scope and sequence of the course and, and contribute to the outcomes, right? So in that sense, we had to tweak the syllabi slightly and sort of like find a good point to include it and then make sure that it did match up with the outcomes that we originally had intended for those courses. So in the, in the case of the writing course, it worked out great in the sense of that they were able to explore this whole idea of identity in how you use Spanish, right? In this case, uh, how Spanish is used in, as a national language in Chile, and they compare it as is it you, it's used here by heritage speakers in the US. So that was um, a good match for what we had in, in, in mind for our heritage Spanish course. And in the sense of the marketing folk, they had a good um, match to their outcome where they wanted to kind of like take upon identity as a way of expressing um, or better selling an item or a product, right? So, um, Along the lines of that, let's talk about the challenges because this was a pilot after all, and we were kind of also looking at how uh, it went surprisingly well, but um, there were some challenges to kind of keep in mind, right? Um, so one of the things was the time difference with Santiago, because you'd think we're all kind of like pretty much in the same continent, but no, we were one hour away as we started the semester and then they like saving time. Uh, changed and so suddenly we were two hours away right so the meeting time for classes differed substantially because um the heritage spanish course met on tuesdays and fridays and think and the marketing course met on completely different days and at completely different times so we had to kind of like go on for a lot of goodwill and flexibility for both instructors to try to kind of bring their classes together you know um and then also there were constraints to, to classroom availability. So we needed like a big classroom that was where we would be able to project like large images so we can see each class could see each other. And then also with a stable enough connection that folks can, could go into the private rooms as you can see them working here. Um, uh, so it, it was a little bit tight. That was that can be a constraint. And then of course, uh, technical constraints when you're using whole class meetings over Zoom, um, in terms of the connection, actually, luckily, was very stable, but sometimes at the beginning, and we did some trials beforehand. So again, a lot of time was invested in making sure that things succeeded at the time uh, when it was happening. So we will have a lot of 
preliminary meetings um, to kind of make sure, and we tried all sorts of things. So like the, the feedback, for example, we have multiple um, uh, terminals kind of working at once was an issue. And we were able to resolve that because we kind of like met outside of class, just, you know, the two teams here in the AU and the one in Chile, just to kind of make sure that everything was gonna pan out and we figured out how to do it and it worked out. Um, the other thing that was uh, uh, something that, that's interesting to think about is that we had a, a mismatched number of students in, in each class. So this wasn't like a one-to-one -one sort of exchange. We made it work, but um, you know we had 14 at AU and then 24 in Chile. And the fear that we had uh, of doing like a one-on-one -on -one exchange was if somebody was absent, then that person was gonna be left hanging, right? So we figured that we would put them into groups, uh, little teams, and that would make better sense, right? So in order to accommodate there, like the AU groups will have two people at least, so that if somebody wasn't able to make it, the other person would definitely be able to step in and just kind of contribute that. So that was something to, to also consider. And I am going to wrap things up. We have a little time for questions. So in terms of outcomes, um, we're still kind of working on the data. There's still some surveys that we are um, kind of looking into on both sides. Uh, but overall, uh, we what's coming out of the data that we have been able to crunch so far is that there's an increase in self-perception of intercultural competences. And so people feel that after having gone through this experience, they can better uh, communicate interculturally. So they also see the component as enriching uh, their academic endeavors overall. Um, they also found that there were like some new perspectives in terms of professional interests that were open to them by virtue of having this exchange with the with their counterparts, international counterparts. And also um, they saw some facilitation of personal and academic growth. So um, definitely this was a great, a great, a great um, experience, I think all around, um, just because like, like I said before, we, we had like, really great simpatico with everybody on the team and everybody was like really really enthusiastic about working together and I think that made a big big difference and also like you know that the fact that folks were so willing to be flexible for the sake of students and as you can see the students had a great time so you know that and the outcomes for them were rather um, interesting and I think like overall they enjoyed themselves and I think like they're probably going to keep in touch uh, going forward so we are definitely going to attempt to do this again even you know, uh, in spite of the challenges, um, I think there's some opportunities as well in there. So, so that's what I have for you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan and Gorky. And at this point, um, we are going to have two breakout rooms and in one room, Gorky is going to be waiting for you to ask any questions that if you want to um, receive more information about what he's done, the logistics, uh, more feedback, and there's going to be another room where Susan and I will be waiting for you to address your uh, questions if you want to hear more, um, if you want to know more details. So um, please join us in whichever room you you want to explore more about these about these activities. Uh, Tashina, I saw your question on the chat and I'm happy to um, answer it uh, in the room um, as soon as we get moved in there. So shall we do Gorky room one and... Um... Room two. Oh yeah, we, we didn't say that. So yes, so Gorky, why don't you take room one and then we'll take room two. Okay. Can people self-assign? Yes, and then everybody self-assign. Fantastic, thank you.
for um, attending this session. And if you have any further questions, I put our contacts on the very last slide of our presentation. And so feel free to reach out to, um, to Susan or to Gorky or to myself. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of uh, the conference. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.